Hello friends. I uh, just wanted to do a very brief video. Um, there's something I've noticed over the last several years, a trend that is on the rise. Um, and I feel like I need to address it. And the reason I need to address it is because as we get closer to the end of history, you need to understand that there are many people who say they worship Jesus but there's more than one Jesus. And so we need to be very clear and uh, specific about who or what we are worshiping and what we mean when we say Jesus. And um, uh, for example, in the Lord's Prayer, uh, Jesus opened it with, Our Father, which art in heaven. The reason for that is there is another father, um, and there are many who worship this other father as their god. Uh, this would be the devil, Satan, who is the father of lies and the first murderer. And so when Jesus opens his prayer, he makes it clear that he is addressing our father, which art in heaven. And uh, I may do another video um, about how the world is being prepared to worship Satan, and uh, many religious systems are looking for a promised one right now. And uh, so when the Antichrist comes on the scene after a world conflict to offer a peace solution and began, begins performing signs and miracles, uh, deceiving people, there are a lot of people who are going to think that it's Jesus. Um, that's kind of a separate thing. Uh, really what sparked this video is that more and more you're seeing people who say it's not good enough to worship Jesus and to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You need to address him by his proper name of uh, Yeshua or some other uh, Hebrew variant of his name. And so I want to address this. Um, because we need to be really careful about teachings like this. Understand that uh, when the church was first getting off the ground um, in Acts, there were uh, Judaizers. And uh, these were people who were, they were not truly born-again Christians, and they were trying to, uh, so the Christians had separated themselves from the Jewish community. Now understand the first Christian con converts, they were Jews. They were Jewish people. Um but there were Judaizers who were trying to then pull those Christians back into the Jewish community and the Jewish traditions, and who were trying to put uh, those Jewish requirements of the law back on the Christian church. And uh, that was a problem, and the disciples talked about this and, you know, um, said, you know, really, uh, we and our fathers were never able to keep the law perfectly, so why are we trying to put this burden, um, you know, at the time that uh, that uh, the gospel began to be preached to Gentiles, why are we trying to put this burden onto Gentiles? Uh, they don't have this same tradition that we have. And uh, so I just wanted to point out some things about that, uh, and this is directed at those people who say that you have to worship um, our Heavenly Father and you have to worship Jesus under the Jewish names, and that's a real problem for me, and um, so I'm just going to point out why. So if you um, know where your Bible came from, the Old Testament and, and the languages that it was written in. So the Old Testament was written uh, in Hebrew um, and uh, Aramaic. So it's written using the Hebrew language and character set, and then some parts of it were written using the Hebrew character set, but in the Aramaic language. And then there's some loan words that got in there as well from Chaldean and stuff like that. Um, so that's your Old Testament, and it was written in Hebrew, um, and it was given to the Jewish nation. Uh, it was given to the Hebrew people. They were God's chosen people, and that entails several different things. Firstly, um, God interacted directly with them, and uh, there was a theocracy for a time where their nation was led by God um, through people that he raised up, uh, priests and prophets. And uh, kings, 
and um, the other nations of the earth, God interacted with them through his nation of Israel. And uh, if people wanted to know the true God of heaven, they could convert and they could join the, uh, the Jewish nation. And um, that actually happened. There are two women, for example, in the lineage of Jesus. One was Rahab the harlot, uh, a citizen of Jericho. She was not Jewish by birth. Another was Ruth the Moabitess, uh, who married Boaz and uh, became one of Jesus Christ's ancestors. Um, but that's one purpose of the Jewish nation. Another is that uh, God was going to use that line to send Jesus Christ, the promised Messiah. Uh, and his role, the Old Testament is very clear about this, his role was to save his people from their sins. The Bible's very clear about that. Jesus was not intended to be a, a head of a, a Jewish empire. Um, unfortunately, the Jewish people, that's what they were looking for at the time that Christ made his advent here. Uh, they were under Roman dominion, and they were looking for uh, a great leader or general to uh, rise up and throw off Roman rule and then rule over them. But uh, Jesus had come to establish the kingdom of God, a spiritual kingdom, not an earthly kingdom. And then um, another purpose that God had for his people was uh, the preservation of the scriptures. And uh, so it makes perfect sense then that um, the scriptures would have been given, the Old Testament scriptures, in the Jewish language. But something changed in the New Testament. Um, Christ was the fulfillment of the Old Testament. And uh, accordingly... Um, so God never changes, but the way that he deals with people um, in different eras or ages of history does change. Um, so everyone prior to the coming of Jesus was looking forward to the Messiah. And now we look back at his sacrificial death on the cross for our sins. Um, however, uh, the Orthodox Judaism never really uh, accepted Christ as their Messiah, and they went their own way. And today, let's be very clear about this, Orthodox Judaism is a false religious system. There are still um, some Jewish people who try to just stick with the Torah and following that, the law. Um, but for the most part, there's been a lot of uh, other doctrines of men that have been wrapped around the original law as it was given to Moses. And um, Judaism, Orthodox Judaism today, there's some pretty dark things within that uh, religious system. And uh, perhaps we'll talk about that in another video at another time. But uh, what I'm trying to say here is the Old Testament, um, God was still dealing with the Jewish nation at that point, and that's how he dealt with humanity. Things changed after Jesus Christ fulfilled the Old Testament. Salvation, which prior to that had been of the Jews only, you had to be a, a proselyte or a conver converted Jew uh, if you wanted to be saved prior to that point. But then afterwards, uh, salvation was opened up to Gentiles like me. I'm not Jewish. And uh, the New Testament was written in Greek, uh, Greek character set, Greek language, and... Um, uh, there is Aramaic in there as well, and probably loan words from other languages also. But that's significant. The New Testament is written in Greek. Why is that? Well, that was the language of the, that was the, uh, the lingua franca, the common tongue, if you will, of uh, commerce and international diplomacy of the Gentile world. So you see between the Old Testament, Hebrew, um, at that point the Old Testament was... God was dealing with the Hebrews. In the New Testament, God's dealing with everybody uh, because God is, he is the Lord of, you know, Jew and Gentile, um, all of us. He's our, our God, everyone's God. But, um, so understand that God chose to give his word to his disciples in Greek, uh, a Gentile tongue. And that is significant because Jesus that name derives from the Greek. So I have no problem whatsoever if someone is of a Jewish background and they want to call uh, 
Jesus um, Yeshua, uh, which is um, the original version of, in English we would say Joshua, but, you know, it is actually Jesus' name. Um, the, uh, the Hebrew Yeshua is uh, the name that we have in the Greek rendered as Jesus. But understand that I'm a Gentile, I'm not a Jew. And the New Testament was actually given in Greek, a Gentile tongue. And that is how Jesus chose to give the scriptures to his uh, disciples. And um, here in the, uh, the passage dealing with the conversion of Saul, where Jesus reveals himself to Saul, Saul says, uh, who art on, on the road to Damascus, Saul says, who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Um, so Jesus chose to reveal himself as Jesus. So I don't call him Yeshua. Um, and I'm not someone, I will. you will never hear me teaching or saying that you absolutely have to call Jesus Yeshua. Otherwise he won't hear your prayers. Otherwise you're worshiping a false entity. No, Jesus chose to reveal himself to the Gentile world as Jesus and so, I worship Jesus, Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, God in the flesh, uh, the promised Messiah who was sent to save us from our sins. And understand that that is humanity's biggest problem. That is humanity's biggest problem, our fallen sin nature. I hope you found this video to be of interest. Uh, you guys have a great weekend, and uh, Lord willing, I will talk to you again at some point in the future. Have a good one.